Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so we're gonna go over something called Mame Hooker today. Now, if you saw my earlier video talking about Mame Hooker with the gun cart, the positional analog guns, I went through a lot of the details, the big high level, what Mame Hooker is, how it can initiate recoil and rumble and lights. Uh, for that particular project, we needed to use Mame Hooker to get those guns to recoil. Without Mame Hooker, the recoil wouldn't work unless you were playing a game that was native that could recognize those guns and send the recoil commands. Fast forward to now, I'm back over on the light gun cabinet with my gun for IRs. Now, Mame Hooker is now integrated with my uh, light gun cabinet with the gun for IR. Now, originally, I just had the default automatic recoil option for the gun for IRs, which is one shot, one pull of the trigger is a single shot recoil. And if you hold the trigger, you'll get a uh, slight pause and then it goes into full auto recoil. And then shooting off screen, you'll get a rumble if you have a rumble motor installed. Now that's great. That's a great option that we didn't have on the analog gun cart for the pedestal guns. But if you use MAME hooker with a uh, gun for IR, you can get dynamic recoil into this, which means that uh, it'll always be uh, automatic on an automatic weapon. It'll always be single shot on a single shot weapon. But more importantly, you can get uh, out of ammo. It'll stop recoiling altogether. You can get uh, different fire rates if like, say your gun is running on low power. On some games, the recoil will slow down. And then you can actually also initiate that rumble motor to do a lot more than just rumble when you shoot off screen. Uh, so a lot of the games, I have the rumble motor in this gun set to uh, you know, activate when I get damage. With all of this put together, it really makes for a great thing. So when somebody comes over and you're playing two players and they're shooting and it's still on the default, what'll happen is they'll run out of ammo, but they still feel that that clicking happening. So they just keep shooting and they don't realize that they've run out of ammo. And I have to like, hey, you need to reload. You need to reload. You need to shoot off screen. You hit the reload button and then they can keep going. But with Mame Hooker, what'll happen is that recoil will, will stop and they realize, oh, I'm out of ammo. So that's that right there alone is more than enough reason to go through the hassle of setting a Mame Hooker. So I asked a few of you if you were interested in a high level walkthrough of how to set up Mame Hooker with your gun for IR and the overwhelming answer was yes. So that's what we're gonna go through today. Uh, we talked about what MAME Hooker is, and now we're gonna talk about how to use it. Okay, first you wanna download MAME Hooker, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to this page in the video description below. Once you unpack that, you're gonna have the executable here. Just right click, go to properties, and you wanna make sure that you set this to run as administrator. And I also like to run this in compatibility mode for Windows 7. Once those are set, you can set MAME Hooker to start with Windows, and you'll see an icon for it here in your system tray. Now, if you right click on that icon, you can go to show debug and that's going to bring up your debug window. Now, this window is probably going to be blank the first time you launch it. But the important thing is that once you launch a game, preferably in windowed mode, so you can see them both at the same time, you should see MAME Hooker hook that game and show your outputs real time. Now, of course, you don't need to run the debug window. This is just so that you can troubleshoot or initially set up your MAME Hooker so you can get some real time feedback to see if it's working or not. So what MAME Hooker is doing, it's running in the background, constantly listening for any game that's sending outputs. In this example, you can see that Virtual Cop 2 is sending outputs and MAME Hooker is picking up on that. And you can see that in the debug window. But now it's actually up to your individual games or emulators to send those outputs. So MAME Hooker has something to pick up on. So let's start with MAME. MAME is great because you can actually have the emulator send outputs for all games with a single entry in your MAME.ini. Now, not all MAME versions play well with MAME Hooker. I'm using MAME 0196, and that one's working for me. So if you're using a different version, you're having trouble getting MAME Hooker to pick up anything, maybe try 0196. But once you have that, go to your MAME.ini file and edit it. And you want to scroll down to your outputs and make sure you have a line that says outputs windows. Now, when you launch a MAME game, MAME hooker should hook that game and it's going to go ahead and create an INI file for that game if one doesn't already exist. So if you look in your MAME hooker folder inside INIs, you'll probably see a subfolder created for MAME and inside there you're going to see an INI for your ROM. If, again, if one doesn't already exist, 
uh, here, all of my INI is already populated, but if this is the first time you're running it, you might just see the one game that you just launched. Now let's talk about everything that isn't MAME. So if you want to get outputs on your other gun games, your best bet is Demol Shooter. Now here's hoping that you're all big fans of Demol Shooter already because it supports two-player light guns on a bunch of games that didn't have that functionality before. So if you've got Demol Shooter, go ahead and open it up. And in the drop-down menu, you want to go down to Outputs and make sure you put a check mark in Outputs. And that's it. Now Demol Shooter is going to try to send outputs for every game that you're using with Demol Shooter. So here's an example AHK file that I have that's launching a Model 2 game with Demol Shooter. The first line launches Demol Shooter, targeting Model 2 with the ROM Gunblade. So this is running Gunblade on the Model 2 emulator. The next line actually runs the emulator and points to the game. And then I've got an escape command that kills the whole process. So you can see here when I run that AHK, it launches the emulator. And you can see in the debug window that it starts hooking the Gunblade ROM. Now, if you jump over to the Demol Shooter wiki, not only will you see a full list of games that are supported with outputs, but you'll actually also be able to see all of the individual command lines to launch each game with Demol Shooter. Uh, you do not need to be using Demol Shooter to configure your controls. Uh, there's a lot of games in TechnoParrot nowadays where TechnoParrot can map dual light guns, but in those cases, you can still launch Demol Shooter to get your output support. And I'll have a link to the Demol Shooter downloads page as well as to the wiki page in the video description below. Okay, so now we've got all your games sending outputs and we've got MameHooker listening for those outputs. But how do we then get MameHooker to tell your gun what to do when it hears those outputs? So what you want to do is go back into your MameHooker folder, then into INI, then MAME, and you want to look at these INI files that the MameHooker generates when it hooks a game that's sending outputs. Now a fresh INI is going to have the outputs on the left, and then an equal symbol with nothing, meaning it doesn't know what to do when that output actually fires. So we can go ahead and put in serial commands or machine code here to tell it to do something when one of those outputs fire. So here's my VirtuaCop 2 INI file. Now just high level, if you look at this, what's happening is that at MAME start or at game start, it's actually going to the gun for IRs, uh, both player one and player two, and it's deactivating all of their default settings. So their automatic recoil, automatic rumbles, it's de deactivating all of that. Then during the game, whenever CTM recoil for player one or player two goes off, it fires the recoil solenoid for player one and player two guns. Same thing, whenever player one or player two are damaged, it's firing off the rumble motors for the player one and player two guns. Then at MAME stop or at game stop, it goes ahead and reactivates all of the default settings for gun for IR. So I get back to my automatic recoil between single shot and full auto if I hold it, and rumble if I shoot off screen. Now my gun for IR pistols are set for comp ports 1 for player 1 and comp port 2 for player 2. So if you look at this line here, you'll see CMO1 and CMO2, that's referring to the comp ports. If your guns are not on those comp ports, you want to go ahead and find out what comp ports your guns are, and then edit this line here to match. Now, not all INI files are going to look the same, and not all the outputs are going to be the same. Here's a different example. This is Operation Wolf for MAME. You can see here that um, I'm doing the same MAME start command. Uh, now, at MAME stop, I'm just switching the player one gun back to automatic because there is no player two in this game. But uh, down below, there is no damage output on this game, so there's no rumble commands. But I do have the recoil command for the player one gun under the player one recoil piston, which is one of the outputs that this game puts out. Now, not every game that hooks is going to be a home run when it comes to recoil. For example, here's Lethal Enforcers. You're gonna see here that I have nothing written to next to any of its outputs because this game doesn't send recoil output or damage output, which are the only two things I'm really interested in. So for this game, I leave everything blank and the gun for IR stays in its default automatic mode where it's single, trigger pull for single shot, hold the trigger for full auto shot. So when I play like this, when I run out of ammo, the gun's going to keep recoiling. And I just go ahead and just play like that, and I don't have Mame Hooker actually tell the gun to do anything. But for the games out there that do have really great outputs, Mame Hooker is amazing. It's really immersive. Here's a, a clip of me playing Operation Ghost. In this game, your weapon has multiple fire modes. Single shot, three round burst, and full auto. Here I'm switching between single shot and the three round burst. 
It's really immersive. I can't recommend this enough. Once you get it up and running, it's just set and forget. It's always there waiting for you. It's just going to kick in. If you have any trouble getting name to hook in the beginning, that's when you want to have your debug window up. You want to have your game running in windowed mode so you can see everything side by side. But again, once it's up and running, you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the contents of my Gunblade New York INI file in the video description below because I think that gives a good overview of MAME start, MAME stop, your gun for IR recoil, and your gun for IR rumble motor, which you can assign to your fire and your damage. Now I know this is just a high level video. I didn't go down to the nitty gritty of every single game's INI files or outputs. But I hope this puts you on the right path and it's given you a good overview of what MAME Hooker is and how it can work with your gun for IR. If you're having trouble getting MAME Hooker to run or to hook your games, don't get frustrated. We've all been there. It may be a permissions issue or sometimes you're missing prerequisite visual basic software or something like that. But the community is here to help. They help me and I'm hoping this video helps you guys and puts you on the right path. So feel free to leave comments down below. I'll answer where I can and I'll catch you all in another video.